as of 2017, I'm still on Adobe Premiere Pro 5.5. Why? Because it still brings in material from a variety of different devices and it still can export material to a variety of different formats. So for me, I don't have a current need to upgrade. The reason for this video, however, is to talk about what happens after we're done with the project. You know, we go file, save, and then we exit and maybe we try to trash our media if we can find it or if it's scattered all over the drive, then we start looking for it everywhere. I keep the Adobe Premiere program on the C drive and all my sources on my E drive. And there they're kept in a folder called my video and each one is labeled for the appropriate project. This helps me organizationally and it also makes it easier to clean up after a project is done. Adobe Premiere can help with that by giving you something called Project Manager, which is listed under Project. In the Project Manager, it's a little daunting and confusing initially. I'm going to see if I can explain this so it makes sense. Source is whatever sequences you've created. In this project, we have two sequences and they're listed right here. We can deselect one if we only want to move this project over and not this sequence. In my case, I'm going to do both. Resulting project, that is what you want the system to do with the things you've selected up here. We have create new trim project, which is the way I normally work. That takes all my media, trims it down. So let's say, for example, I have a clip that's 30 seconds long, but I only use two seconds of it in the video. Then I'm only going to move those two seconds, not the remaining 28. If I select exclude unused clips, it'll do exactly that. Now there's, you can make media offline. I don't because I like having, when I copy over to my external drive, I have basically the entire sequence and project there so I can reconstitute it very quickly if I need to revise it or update it. In options, you're given the choice of using handles. Handles allows you to define from zero to 100 frames, how much extra on a clip is available to you in the future. So if you have a one second clip and you give it 30 frame handles, now you can do dissolves on either side of that. We can rename media. I don't rename media. I always keep it the same name, but if that's something you do, you can select that. Then important, what is important here is selecting the path. In my case, I'm going to an external drive and it's sorted out by years. And then I come down here and using shift control N, I create a new project. I'm going to call this Quicken Backup Demo because I already have this project backed up here. And then I select that folder. This space gives you some information as to how much space you're saving by making these choices. Now before I tell this to go forward, let's look at the, the other remaining option, which is collect file and copy to a new location. What this does is it goes through your entire system, gets all the material that made up these two sequences, and it's going to move them over. And if you decide to exclude unused clips, it'll eliminate those but it will include the preview files and the audio conforms. It'll also allow you to rename your clips. What's the difference between these two? In trim, remember we're excluding the material that you didn't use in your sequence. In collect files and copy to a new location, it's gonna copy everything over except for a clip that wasn't used at all in your sequence. So the trim will save you a lot more space than the collect everything and move it over. And again, you'll find a path for it and then tell it to do it. So in my case, let's select collect new trim project, hit OK. And now it's going to copy them over to the external drive. If we look at the external drive under 
my backup demo, there's the trimmed Quicken upgrade. And so now you see that there's all the trimmed media, including still images and the project. There's no output media here. That's something you have to be aware of. Now in my original backup, you'll see that there is the actual project output file. And the reason I keep a copy of that is, let's say YouTube crunches, corrupts my video for some reason, and I need to upload it again, I have a copy here. I could, of course, just make a new copy, but it's easier just to grab this and upload it or repurpose it in Vimeo or some other place or make a copy on a DVD or send to a friend, whatever. And the real reason to organize your media is because it's an asset. This is an asset, especially if you own it, that you can recycle, repurpose, and monetize in different ways. And if you want, save the output so that you have that also available to you. Hope you find this useful. If you do, give us a like, make a comment, subscribe. Thank you for watching.